we've seen the pandemic in so many ways just deepen the divides of, of, of inequality and that really plays out when it comes to the workplace. It sure does. And I think women have been hit hard. Firstly, they've been at the front line uh, in fighting the COVID-19 pandemic, but also they've, uh, we know that they've been the ones that have been hit hardest by job losses, uh, by losing the, the number of hours that they can work each week. And on top of that, since March, we have actually seen our female workforce participation rate drop by 1.5 percentage points. It's going to be pretty hard to claw that back. So where are we actually seeing progress and where, particularly in terms of, of policy and actual substantial policy change within the corporate sector, is there still lacking? Look, we know from our data and from collecting data uh, for seven years now that when employers take action on gender equality, the gender pay gap goes down. Uh, the gender pay gap is a symptom of a broader problem. It's a symptom of, of cultural problems that we have in Australia and more broadly across the world. Uh, and, and if we have employers addressing the barriers that women face in entering the workforce, in moving their careers uh, up through the management pipeline, then we actually see the gender pay gap go down. So it's about employers taking action. And just because we're in a, you know, an economic downturn, as we head into the recovery, the evidence that we have is unequivocal, that if you focus on gender equality, uh, you will be ahead of your rivals. You will beat your competition because gender equality is good for business. We have seen places like South Korea with a gender pay gap of more than 30 percent. You have traveled to countries like South Korea, to Vietnam, Japan. Uh, what could these countries learn from Australia and what could Australia learn from these countries as well in trying to achieve gender equality? I think the great thing that we've been doing in Australia that has actually proved to be a huge advantage for us is collecting data. We are collecting data from the private sector around gender equality. We know what the state of play is in Australia around gender equality. So my message to all countries is if you start collecting the data, if you start uh, measuring what you are doing, you will be able to affect change. I think the other thing that we're doing here is that the agency is also tasked with educating and influencing organisations to make change. And there is much that we can learn from, from our countries, uh, fellow countries in Asia as well. I mean, they have a wonderful work ethic in Asia and we need to follow that. But I think measuring, collecting the data and measuring what we do is absolutely vital. So Libby, what is the advice that you would give to the private sector, to companies, employers as they face the pandemic and they need to cut costs, but at the same time, keep trying to strive for that gender equality and try to close that pay gap? I think the most important thing that employers must do is, you know, don't immediately go for the low-hanging fruit. In times of economic hardship and when, we've got to, when we're looking at downturns in organisations, uh, organisations tend to cut the casual and part-time employees first, and they tend to be in, in the majority women. So be more creative, look more deeply at uh, what your organisation's doing, who, who are performing the different roles in your organisation and, you know, uh, be a bit, bit more um, strategic about who you need to let go. We all understand uh, that we need to let go staff, but be, be more strategic about it so that you are not uh, discriminating against women. And of course, Libby, attrition on you know the entry levels and mid levels are often one of the reasons why we don't see representation of women and other diverse elements at the highest levels of leadership. Right? I'm wondering what your views are on what we're seeing happen at AMP at the moment, and is there a sense that this is a turning point that certainly high-profile institutional investors like pension funds in Australia are starting to demand more out of the cultural aspects of these corporations? Yeah, absolutely. I think the tide has absolutely turned here and the community and investors 
um, uh, it just no longer prepared to put up with um, inaction around poor behaviour, particularly in terms of sexual harassment in the workplaces. I think the culture of any workplace is determined by the executive and the board. And harping back to the way it was in, 19, in the 1970s and 80s just doesn't cut it anymore. And the community and the investor community in particular uh, really have wised up to this and are starting to put pressure on boards, as they should.